Creating book covers can cost you thousands of dollars if you are doing it for a lot of books. At best, a book cover usually costs between one and $300 and can cost a whole lot more depending on who your artist is. So in this video, I'm going to give you three simple steps to create your own book cover using AI and other tools like Canva or Adobe Photoshop. Now let me just address the elephant in the room is that I'm not advocating that you replace all book cover artists with AI. These artists are very good at what they do and likely know the genre better than you do. And so they are going to be able to create a book cover that is more likely to appeal to your audience and just looks more professional. However, if you're using some of the techniques that I talk about, like my how to write a book in a day to create all of these supplemental books, creating book covers for all of those books is just not very feasible. For instance, I have a book series with eight books and I'm currently working on creating supplemental materials for all eight. While in that case, I would recommend just biting the bullet and, and getting a full professional cover for the main books, all of those supplemental books, if you don't use AI, would double the amount of money that I'm having to pay for book covers. And so I'm going to be using AI to do those supplemental books. So really I look at AI art as being a good supplemental practice to really enhance the quality of everything overall without breaking your budget. But I do recommend a professional artist for your primary books. So, it's so with that, let's get into the three steps to create your book covers. Step number one is to research your genre. Remember I said that the book cover artists likely understand the genre better than you do. That is why step one is so important that you understand the genre because if you get it wrong, nobody will touch your book even if it looks great. And so the best place to do that is to come over here to Amazon and you're, we're going to be looking specifically at the bestsellers in the different genres. Now we're looking at all of the Kindle bestsellers here uh, and this is for everything. So all genres here and what we want to do is dive down into the smaller genres. So you will select Kindle eBooks and we'll pick a relatively straightforward option here. Let's go with mystery thriller suspense. And so now you can see all the mystery thrillers and you're starting to see some commonalities here, right? But everything, you know, it's not necessarily completely there yet. So let's dial down even further and say mystery. Now keep in mind that understanding the best sellers for Amazon's categories is not going to be 100%. Basically, you want to immerse yourself in your genre so that you really understand the tropes that you will see in the cover itself because some of these will be outliers. Some of them will be actually not belonging in this genre. So there's a lot there that you want to keep in mind. From mystery, we can dive down even per even further. So let's just say private investigators. All right, now we've got something and you can see a lot of commonalities between all of these. There's usually a big bold text with a sans serif font, usually in like a bright color, uh, like what we got yellow here, we got white kind of a yellowish orange here, some red, bright blue here, although I don't think this cover is really as good if you ask me. Uh, you've got black on white with red, so a lot of bright colors. And then the what we see in the actual image is usually a figure facing away from us, sometimes in a silhouette format. Sometimes you have like a little house here. This one's a little different because it has like the hand of someone on there. You could do something like that if you wanted to imitate that cover. But I'd say like this, what we see here is probably the most common thing that you see with thrillers and all of that. It's very common to see just the silhouette of a person and then some interesting location behind them. So like a forested wood or a cool house or a city skyline, something like that. And so it's important to do some of this research first so you know what you're looking at. But again, like I said, you may have to look beyond the Amazon bestsellers because there may be some that just don't belong here. But this so far is looking fairly consistent, so I think we can work with this. Step two now is going to be 
actually generating the image. The two best ways of doing this right now are with Dolly 3 or, or with Midjourney. If you need something super specific, then Dolly 3 might be the way to go. But I already have a, I already know just based on the context of the image that we're going to be creating here that Midjourney will be just fine. And Midjourney tends to create more aesthetically pleasing images. So I'm going to be using Midjourney. The other thing that Midjourney does that Dolly 3 does not currently at least is upscale the image. Midjourney has one of the best upscalers right now. You can get it to a really, really high quality. And so because of that, we're gonna be using Midjourney. So here in Midjourney, you can see I've been, you know, generating a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna come over to this. This is just a channel that I created in Midjourney specifically for book covers. You saw I was creating something here for a fantasy book cover before which looked pretty good, but we're gonna be doing something here. And in Mid Journey, the way you create an image is you do slash imagine. This is all done in Discord, and this is not a video about how to use Mid Journey um, and how to get set up in Mid Journey. If you wanna do that, I did do a video a while ago about that, so you can look at my playlist on AI art and all of that, but there are plenty of videos on YouTube about how to set up Mid Journey, so I look, recommend looking at one of those. But we want something in that thriller genre, right? So let's just say a woman facing away from the camera, because that is what we seem to have a lot, in the woods at night. And we could leave it at that. But something that I have found to be somewhat helpful to get the right vibe correct is to say a book cover image for a thriller and then say a woman facing away from the camera in the woods at night, etc. The only thing that you're going to see if you say a book cover image for a thriller is you're likely to get some text in there. And if you are using a program like Adobe Photoshop, that's not any problem at all. Photoshop is very good at fixing all of those, but keep in mind that you are likely to get some text if you do that. So the other option is to try and get um, the image you want without saying any, anything about it being a book cover image. Another thing that you could say here, actually let's try this one just as it is and then I will try it a different way and see if that works. But then you want to, we want to get it in the right aspect ratio. And the right aspect ratio for book covers is 160 by 256. Um, we could probably bring that aspect ratio down a bit, but that's those are the dimensions of a Kindle image on Amazon. It's 1600 by 2560. So I just took off a zero there and got it to 16 or er, to 160 by 256. So if we let that go, we'll see what it gives us. And this is what it gave us. And as you can see, these are pretty much perfect. The they perfectly capture the mood of a thriller. It's nighttime, she's in the woods, she's facing away. Any one of these would do. I think the second one right here is my favorite. But as you can see, they all do have some gibberish text, right? So we would have to take care of that later. But let's try this again. And I'm just gonna copy everything that we have here, except for the beginning part. But instead of putting it at the beginning, at the end of this prompt, I'm going to say, in the style of a thriller book cover image, and I'm wondering if I just say in the style of rather than a book cover image, it might do a little bit better. So let's give that a go and see if it produces anything better. All right, now we've got a few more and this one did not have the text, which is great. Although I sort of get the feeling that the thriller aspect of it is, is less pronounced. It's not quite as good of a th thriller cover. So we could play with this a bit and and figure it out, but I'm actually, just so I can demonstrate what to do, I'm actually going to use one of these earlier ones with the gibberish text in it. I'm gonna upscale by hitting U2 right here for this second one, upscale two. Now we've upscaled this, but we wanna upscale it even more because this upscale, while great, is not going to be at the full high quality that it can be. So we're gonna upscale this by two. You can upscale by four, but that's gonna take a, a extra of the hours that Midjourney gives you. And you will actually get to the quality that you need with upscale times two. So we're gonna just hit upscale two, and then we're gonna take this into Photoshop. 
and complete our third step. All right, we have our fully upscaled image here. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And now we're gonna go out of mid-journey and we will come back to this and reference this a little bit, but let's go into Photoshop. Now, do you need Photoshop for this next step? No, but you are going to need probably either camera Canva's premium features or Adobe Photoshop to do this next step well. If you do not have either, this is going to be very difficult for you, especially with removing the text, the gibberish text that we don't want. So we've brought our image in here. Both Photoshop and Canva make it pretty easy to remove this text. And Photoshop is actually, I just love the way Photoshop does it. I can go ahead and select this. This is also not a tutorial for Adobe Photoshop. There are plenty out there that will tell you how to use the generative AI features, but basically we're just gonna sit, hit generative fill. We're not going to tell it to add anything specific and it will likely guess from the context that we just wanna get rid of this text. So I'm gonna hit generate and boom, it's gone. That's all you have to do if you have Adobe Photoshop and Canva has some similar things as well. So the next step is to add our text. Now, this is the area where I see most authors messing up. And in fact, this is for me the biggest tell that someone has used AI is the image looks great and super professional, but the text looks awful. And I'll give you some examples of what that looks like. The probably the most common one, we're gonna go ahead and put my name here at the top and then we'll put, we'll just call it book title here at the bottom, we're gonna give it and make it really big here. Something like that, right? So we've got the things positioned and this is just an aerial font. The most common thing, I don't know why this is so common. Maybe that's a common effect that I see people do, but so many people will just have plain white text in a non-interesting font. And then they'll often put a little bit of a, they'll put like a black stroke around it like you see here which isn't quite as visible since this image is darker, but I see it all the time where people just have a plain white font and some black things around this. Do not do this, okay? You need to do your research on font because it is one of the biggest of what the genre is, okay? So we do not want this stroke here and we wanna choose a font that is consistent with the genre, right? So let's go back to our research here. If you look at these, these are all sans serif fonts for the most part. They seem a little bit taller and they're bright. They pop out from the background quite a bit. I really like this one actually, the Vanishing Kin. It has this like almost neon yellowish greenish color. Maybe we can do something like that, especially because our book cover looks a lot like this. And if you really want to go in depth, you can have the text like disappear behind the person like this person uh, you see the, the text kind of dis disappearing we do see that this text does have a little bit of a drop shadow to kind of set it apart that's fine just don't do that stroke thing that we saw before the name is down here looks like it's in the same sort of font we've got more text up here you don't necessarily need that like, so this is like series information or if you have a consistent character in since this is a thriller then that's what you'd want to go but for now i'm just going to show you how to do it with a the main title here as well as the author name so we want to do something like this right so the first step is to find a font now there are a lot of good places to find premium fonts out there for not too expensive my favorite is called creative market this is where i go to get all of my fonts and i do buy the the fonts so I have the rights to use them. There are all kinds of different things that you can find here. And especially in my genre, writing fantasy, you really need some like special looking fonts for fantasy. Thriller, romance, nonfiction are a little bit more, but obviously we want something better than Arial font here. So the first thing we're gonna do is look for a font. I already have one that I think works for Thriller, so we're gonna find that. All right, so that looks better. We wanna maybe play with the placement of the words here. So for, for instance, let's get the two words a little closer together. This is where some skill in a designer program could be useful. So something like that, and then it's too small here, so I'm going to actually 
increase the size a bit. We'll recenter it here. Something like that looks good. And then we want to apply the same font to my name up here. All right, there we go. Already a remarkable improvement on what we had just from changing the font. Okay, the next step is to give it a color. So the ones that we saw here all had very bright colors here. So I'm just going to go with a yellow just like that one. And notice this one had a yellow for the main title and then white for the text. And so we're going to do something similar as well. We'll use white for my author name, but the book title will do something different. So let's see what options we have. We just come over here to our color picker and already boom, like there is something much better. I'm going to make it a little darker so it kind of matches the spookiness. But that right there, I think, is actually not bad compared to what we had. There is something just, uh, I don't know, a little bit off about it. I feel like this woman is down too low. So maybe what we want to do is take the background and move it up a bit like this. So that, yeah, that, that works there. The only problem is now we don't have anything down here at the bottom. So what we can do, I'm going to just take these away for a little bit. What we're going to do is select everything down here and say generative fill. And we're just going to let Photoshop fill in the blank there because it can usually do a good job of that sort of thing. I believe Canva can do something similar as well. And if not, you could also go back to mid journey and regenerate with a little bit more on beneath it. But there we go. So that looks fine. I'm going to turn back this back on and there we have a decent book cover. OK, this is just adding the font and the color already makes it look significantly better. You could play around with this even more. Something I have done in the past is play around with these settings here in Photoshop. So if we go to book title, maybe hit some of these overlay. So something like this color dodge. Color Dodge looks actually amazing here because it sort of blends, you know, you can see through it, but it still has that really bright color. So something like that could be really cool. But this is basically my three step process. You want to do your research. You want to generate the actual image in the background and then spend extra time really making sure you have the text looking great. And if you have to look up a couple of tutorials on how to do it, then make sure you do it because it will make a whole lot of difference. And so I hope that was useful to you. I'll see you in the next video.